indicated, that we had indicated early on in our program that E.O. Leblanc is the uncle, or was the uncle of Skerritt, and she wanted to correct that to say that's not true, that E.O. Leblanc was not Roosevelt Skerritt's uncle. And I just wanted to clarify that for the record. History now. Before I was born, Portsmouth was voting Labour. Before Ian Douglas was born, Portsmouth was voting Labour. Before Roosevelt's carrot was born, Portsmouth was voting Labour. Long before Jefferson James was born, Portsmouth was voting Labour. So I have mentioned to you four players within the politics of Dominica right now on different sides of the political fence. And none of us, none of us in our lifetime know Portsmouth to be voting anything else but Labour. In the Portsmouth constituency, there is a family, the Douglas family, that has given the constituency a number of its representatives. Robert Douglas, Michael Douglas, Rosie Douglas, and more recently, Ian Douglas. And you would believe that this is the point in the history of Portsmouth where Portsmouth would be seeing the kind of representation from a parliamentary representative and the Labour Party that will be the shining example of what representation in politics in Dominica is all about. Fair? That's fair. You have Ian, Dog, Ian Douglas and Labour Party in 2014. After 60 years of voting Labour, and after the last 15 years in government under Labour. Last 15 years in government under Labour. Dominica has been last in reviving its agriculture, and that is okay for Ian Douglas. Dominica is last in earning foreign exchange in the OECS, and that is okay for Ian Douglas. Dominica is last in attracting foreign direct investments into its economy, and that is okay for Ian Douglas. Dominica is last in tourism performance. Ian Douglas is the minister, he has been the minister since 2007, and that is okay for Ian Douglas. Before Ian Douglas, there was Ivo Nassif, a dollar a year minister in the tourism ministry. He had plans for a marina in the natural bay there, that natural bay that Portsmouth has. Beautiful, scenic. Evo Nassif left the tourism ministry in 2007. Ian Douglas took over. Not one word about a marina for Portsmouth, which has such great strategic significance for the tourism product of Dominica. So, no vision, Portsmouth perishing. Ian Dog coming last. He's not going to say that I saw in the, in the Calypso finals, one of those years, Ian Douglas went on the stage to say his dog came last. I saw that. You were there? <laughs> All right. I know this. I know the the gas station Gem had there. Huh? Where Gem gas station? Gem gas station close. <laughs> I don't remember. Anybody remember Coconut Beach? The Karams had a facility called Coconut Beach down there. Very good. <laughs> Coconut Beach disappeared on the labor. Gem gas station disappeared on the labor. 
And that's okay for Ian Douglas. Hmm? KFC came and went under Ian. Best Buy came and went. Grand Bazaar came and all, all you counting with me. Rituals came and went. Zans came and went. Hmm? And that is okay for Ian Douglas. When they come and they go, jobs are going with them as well. And Ian couldn't care less. Less opportunities for young people to work in Portsmouth and the representative of labor couldn't care any less. So I'm saying all these things for you to understand. It's important for Portsmouth to move to a higher level of representation. Did you hear Jefferson James tonight? Did you listen to him carefully? Have you ever heard that level of clarity coming from Ian Douglas on anything to do with Portsmouth? The budget was finished. They wrapped it up. Scary curse everybody. Denigrate everybody. Malpale everybody. Using the immunity of the parliament and hiding behind the warp duet of the speaker. Ian sit down in the parliament. He happy. Ian seconded. And Ian was first to stand up and say, Danny Luge shouldn't be in the parliament. Danny has never lied in the parliament, you know. Danny has never lied in the parliament. Roosevelt Skerritt has made a habit of lying in the parliament, of using the house for his disgraceful political conduct. And that is okay for Ian Douglas. Ian Douglas told us, boy, I give my heart and soul to that man. Who is that man now? The man Ian is talking about is a self-proclaimed modern day pirate that has to answer to the people of Dominica for the over 100 million dollars that have been plundered from the public purse that he knows about. But that's okay for Ian. Ian has no concern about the rape and plunder of the treasury of Dominica. The garbage bin bubbled for over $500,000. The fertilizer bubbled for over $400,000. The swindle of Felix Chen, $54 million. The plunder for diplomatic passports and diplomatic immunity, $43 million. The land tax fraud, over $100,000 and the slush fund from kickbacks managed by Isidore for the Prime Minister, over $2.6 million, over $100 million looted from the public interest by the modern-day pirate, the self-proclaimed modern-day pirate that Ian Douglas says, I have given my heart and have given my soul to this man. And you know, if you talk into him and you sit down there, you know, and you turn your back, and you go and drink a glass of water, you will start to malpile, malpile you too. <laughs> and that's good for you. We presented on the 22nd of July a budget. A budget for the growth of the Dominica economy. A budget of hope. A budget to bring Dominica onto the platform from which it can begin to become the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to enjoy life. In contrast, the budget of the Dominica Labour Party presented by Roosevelt Skerritt one day after has no credible plan at all for growing the economy. It insists that the best the Labour Party can do with 16 ministers of government, no 18, they say 18, 80 minutes of the government. How I know that? They sued me. It's not 16 that sued me, it's 18 minutes of the government that sued me. So now it's 18 members they have in the cabinet. The largest cabinet in the entire OECS region. And they are failing 
with everything to do in Dominica. For three years and more, they've been building a hotel down there with the tellers with Moroccan money. When is it going to finish? When are the people going to start getting employment? And when are they going to settle their debts? In the meantime, while they're struggling to complete the Moroccan hotel to put Portsmouth young people to work, there was no struggle to complete the villas. There was no struggle to complete the luxury apartments that have been rented out to Ross University students to compete with the Portsmouth people that have always been in the business before this band of pirates came into government. You have to learn to speak the truth in our Portsmouth. And you have to learn to face the truth too. You cannot build a strategy for the development of your country or your community on a platform of lies. The beginning of wisdom is calling things by their correct name. So DLP is what? Let's call things by their correct name. DLP is what? No, no, DLP is what? DLP, the acronym means what? Call things by their proper name. DLP is what? Dumb Lion Party. 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 Dumb Deception, lies, propaganda. The beginning of wisdom, call things by the correct name. Now, we have to get serious in Dominica. I said to the people of Pennville last week, we have a problem. And the people of that constituency must help us to fix the problem because they are the ones who voted a man who in the parliamentary responsibility now is standing against all the values that are dear to us and all the values that we want to use to raise our children, the values in which we grew up. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a man occupying the highest executive office of the land. He is the Prime Minister. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Dominica. And he lies with impunity. He uses the Parliament to peddle his lies. And when you challenge him, he runs away and he hides. And you don't hear him for a few weeks after you challenge him on the lies. He sends his handlers to rip you apart. And Ian Douglas sometimes joins them on the animal show where they say all sorts of disgraceful things about the candidates of United Workers Party Team Dominica, none of whom, by the way, have received a red cent to be part of this team or to be standing for their constituencies and for the people of Dominica to make Dominica a better place. Roosevelt Scared was paid by Rosie Douglas to get into Labour Party politics. He got his first vehicle as a candidate of the Dominican Labour Party, paid for by Rosie Douglas. The car came from Karam, so Peter, so Peter Karam said. And Norman Schillingford in New York bought his suit for his inauguration. Yes, sir. You think he wants to see any of them today? No. <laughs> you think he want to see them? You think he have any use for them today? No. He's a multi-millionaire. He's a multi-millionaire that has told the people of Dominica that he was going to build a $400,000 modest three-bedroom house which turned out to be a two-plus million dollar venture sitting down in Vegas in the midst of a lot of poverty and broken down homes. But he rises like the phoenix from that with his two million dollar mansion. When you mention that, people say, it's jealous, you're jealous. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with proper stewardship of the Commonwealth of Dominica. And if the people of Dominica continue to let politicians do what they want, 
with their interest, then crapo smoke the pipe. We have a very interesting situation in Portsmouth now. I want to pause to condole with the family of Joshua Etienne, a son of Portsmouth soil. He has roots in Delis and La Plaine as well, son of the soil of Dominica. Ended up dead in police custody. And the matter is being investigated. The matter will go before the court. But all sorts of things are happening that cause us concern. The ordinary citizens of this country. And we are hoping that the errors of their ways will be corrected. And justice will be served. In this matter though, make no mistake about it. The power in people is greater than the people in power. And if the people want it, then justice will come down like a river and righteousness will flow like a mighty stream. No question about it. Light your candle. The powers that be in this country at this time seem somehow to be afraid of light. Now why would that be? Why would they be afraid of light? A vigil is about people together in a single place raising their candles, light. In this case, they want the light of justice to shine on this atrocity that has befallen Joshua Etienne of this community. And I heard today the police said that the vigil is illegal, that they need to have permission. We didn't need permission for this tonight, you know, because it's a public meeting. The public order acts that if you were having a procession, we should have the police permission. But to have this, which comes under the broad banner of freedom of assembly under our constitution, we don't need permission for that. So if you put up your candles now, and you say, well, we're ending the meeting by like a vigil, the police will come and tell you, go home. But this is Dominica. Since when we cannot have a vigil, without the police authorizing us to have a vigil. It's not that many states around the world that have outlawed vigils, you know, especially as part of peaceful, orderly protest action. So far, I think it's only Nigeria, you know, and, and um, China. Hmm? And we come third now? We want to be third? Ladies and gentlemen, when, when matters of this kind come up, we must insist on justice and we must insist on closure for the families. They cannot get Joshua back. The most they can get is justice. We owe them that much. And if you believe that, and your brothers and sisters around Dominica believe that as well, those in authority, those in positions of responsibility for the state's interest in this will have no choice but to ensure that justice is done. Now, I don't know whether you understand or are beginning to understand how far back Dominica has come and how far back Portsmouth is as a result of incompetence, as a result of neglect, as a result of indifference, selfishness, greed by the members of this Dominican Labour Party government. Ian Douglas is a problem right now, you know. He went and opened his mouth to talk about Edison James and claimed he was quoting some report that Tony Astafan prepared. And when Tony Astafano was told that Ian Douglas said it is from his report, he got the information. You know what Tony Astafan said of Ian Douglas? He said that Ian Douglas must have read the report backwards. Today, today, as Tony Astafan rolls in his millions 
from the sweetheart deals in the field of law that he gets from the government. $95,000 for the case in the BVI, $85,000 for the speaker's appeal and so on and so on in one year with watching briefs on this and that where the, the attorneys in the attorney general's chambers are doing all the legwork and so on. With all of that money, all of those millions piling up, Ian Douglas has a little money he owed Edison Jane by order of the court and Tony will not help him to pay it, you know. He has Ian going to the court saying, well, you know, things bad with me, I cannot afford, let me pay a little $200 a month for something like that. I mean, you are all part of the same cabal. You're all part of the same criminal enterprise. Your brother in difficulty, using what you say to go and denigrate and slander people. Let me help him out now. You left him, you've thrown him under the bus. And Ian likes being under the bus. Because more they throw him there, is more he shout labor, labor, labor. More than anybody else, Ian Douglas is in a position to understand that this labor party is not the labor party of Mike or Rosie or E.O. Libla. But he sits down as a Douglas and allows himself to become a puppet of somebody who has hijacked the Labour Party and is denigrating its name across Dominica and the global community.